How does a war prisoner with no sense of meaning build one of the most recognized brands in the world? He was insulted, laughed at, and rejected. Yet, he still created one of the greatest names in the automobile world. His name is Ferruccio Lamborghini, the man who went from selling tractors to dominating supercars, creating a story of inspiration, success, and ambition along the way. But first, we have to go back to 1916. Ferruccio Lamborghini was born on a farm in a northern Italian village named Ranazzo. His parents were in the business of winemaking and were well known for making high quality wine. This meant a lot for young Ferruccio because his parents taught him the importance of high quality products. Growing up was hard because Italy suffered a lot from the aftermath of World War I. Now it's like a tradition for children to continue their parents' business. But young Ferruccio was more interested in fixing tractors than being in the vineyard. That's why when it was time to take over the family business, Ferruccio decided to study mechanics in a technical institute near Bologna. The family talk probably went like, You're breaking your mother's heart! After graduating, he found a job as a blacksmith. When he learned what he needed, he decided to go home. Ferruccio was 18 at that time, and together with his friend, decided to open a workshop in his hometown. Everything was nice, but a few years later, World War II started. We know in what position Italy was during World War II. And because of that, all capable men were drafted to the war, including Ferruccio. He was put in a garrison in Rhode Island in Greece as a mechanic fixing Italy's army's vehicles. When Italy surrendered, the Austrian painter and his boys took the island. Ferruccio liked it there. So he asked the Nazis if he could stay there and open a workshop. The Nazis approved the request, and so Ferruccio had a life and a workshop until the Nazis were beaten and surrendered the island to the British. Then the British took Ferruccio as a war prisoner, but shortly after they realized that this guy is a talented mechanic. So they made him fix the British Army vehicles. After a year, they let him home. He returned to work at his workshop at home and one day a light bulb was on his head. Italy was damaged after the war and they needed a lot of food to recover. For food to be made, you need agriculture and for agriculture, you need equipment. Ferruccio bought old military vehicles and used them to make tractors. They were modified to run on diesel, which was much more cheaper than petrol. People went crazy for the tractors, so officially, one year later, the Lamborghini Trattori company was registered. His tractors were in demand, but he couldn't fulfill the demand. He needed money for that. Ferruccio convinced his father to put the farm as collateral. The risk was insane, but tractors were really affordable and sold like crazy. At that time, the tractor market in Italy was dominated by Fiat and Landini, so it wasn't so easy. The business skyrocketed when the Italian government announced that it will help farmers with loans who will buy Italian machines. In less than 10 years, Lamborghini Trattori went from 30 workers and around 200 tractors per year to 400 workers and 30 tractors per day. Ferruccio became extremely wealthy, spending his money living in luxury and driving the best cars in the world. Now this sounds like a good end to a story, but this isn't even the beginning. One of his cars that he liked to drive was a Ferrari 250 GT. He loved the car, but there was a problem with it. The clutch would always break and Ferruccio would need to take the car to Ferrari mechanics. It happened again and again. Then he decided to take it to his own mechanic. They discovered that the clutch used in Ferrari 250 GT is the same one used in one of his tractors. He was extremely furious. Why? Because he paid 10 euros for the clutch in the tractor and over 1000 euros for the Ferrari clutch. Ferruccio decided to go to Enzo Ferrari himself and offer him a partnership. He had an idea to make the clutch better. Now there are many versions of who said what. But shortly summarized, the conversation went something like As a curse word, you don't know how to drive a Ferrari, you are just a farmer, stick to tractors. Ferruccio, curse word, I will show you how you make a car. Ferruccio wasn't joking, Enzo really hurt his ego. Everybody told Ferruccio that he is insane and that he would go broke. But Ferruccio didn't care. Lamborghini Automobili were born. 
he hired three Ferrari's ex-employees and built a factory. Nine months later, he completed his first sports car, Lamborghini 350 GT. It was revealed first time at Turin Motor Show and it was praised by customers and critics. Funny thing is that the car they presented had no engine because they couldn't find a way to fit the engine. So they fill it up with bricks. After the show, they managed to find a way to put an engine in the car and sold over 13 cars. Now this maybe looks slow, but remember, those were supercars and it was a fresh brand. These numbers are amazing. Over the next two years, over 120 cars were made and sold, releasing iconic cars like Miura P400, which was the first car that had a rear engine. It became a standard for all high-performance cars. Espada, Isedro, Yarama, Uraco, Countach, all named after bulls and all iconic cars. But still, with all these amazing achievements, everything would come down soon. Country of Bolivia ordered 5,000 tractors, which would be amazing for Lamborghini. But after politics problem, that order was cancelled. The tractors were made and no buyer was in sight. That made Ferruccio sell his tractor business to another Italian tractor maker. Then the stock market crashed and an oil embargo was started, which led to increased fuel prices and put the automotive industry in a crisis. Ferruccio decided to retire and sold his car business, but soon the new owner failed and the company was forced to liquidation. The Italian government sold the business to two Swiss businessmen for $600,000, which is now around $4 million. The brothers held huge sugar cane plantations in Africa, but they ran out of money and sold the company to Chrysler. Chrysler made plans to import the brand to US, but failed to make a profit. So they sold the company to an Indonesian conglomerate, Setco Group. But Asia went into a financial crisis. The Setco Group sold it to Audi, who is still today owner of the company. Under Audi, Lambo flourished. They released Gallardo, Huracan, Euros, and a few more. The sales jumped in the sky, especially in the US. Today, Lamborghini is... Well, you know what Lamborghini is. Lambo is valued at $20 billion and in a constant battle with Ferrari. Last year, Lamborghini's revenue was $2.6 billion and their operating profits were $666 million. They sold over 9,000 cars last year and they are planning to sell over 10,000 Euros cars in 2023. They release new cars and plan to make all the vehicles hybrid. Their cars are sold out until the second half of 2024. Shortly said, they are killing it. Ferruccio in retirement built a successful wine business. Looks like he still in his father's steps. And the tractor company that bought Lamborghini Trattori still owns it. The car company is our go-to brand for new money. But if only Enzo Ferrari didn't have such a big ego and listened to Ferruccio. Who knows how this story would have ended. I hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe for more business content and business stories.